Chapel at Rectory is something we do every month with the entire school community. It is a chance for all of us to come together in this beautiful space to stop pause and reflect and to take a look at some of the things that we all have in common. And it's a chance for students to get together and share their thoughts, their reflections. So it's really meant to be a place that is safe to share the spiritual side of ourselves. We take a different theme each month. Uh, for example, we've taken, we've used the theme of new beginnings. <laughs> fall we use the theme of letting go the way a tree lets go of its leaves we choose a variety of readings from various world religions as well as non-religious sources all touching on that theme the more we let god take us over the more truly ourselves we become because he made us we always struggle so hard to hold on but god says trust me and let go we try to keep it as student driven as possible so it would be very common to have 20 kids participating in one way or another, whether it be lighting our candle of peace, doing a reading, or participating in student music. The chapel service each month has a sort of a very um, reliable structure, so kids kind of know what they're coming into. And we, we begin with a reading as a group, the Rectory Chapel Covenant, which is sort of our promise to one another that we're going to respect each other's journeys wherever they may take us and whatever background we come from. We are each on a sacred journey to understand who we are in the context of the wide and wonderful world we share with one another. Though our neighbors And then we go through a series of readings, some music, and a reflection that usually is presented by myself, but sometimes we have students share their ideas and thoughts, other times we have faculty members do that. And really the purpose of chapel is to acknowledge that we are all spiritual beings, whether we are coming from religious backgrounds or not, that there's a part of ourselves that needs nurturing and needs some attention uh, that may not normally happen in the context of a classroom or a sports field. So it's an opportunity to share in that collective experience and nurture who we are in our soul. Because we have a student body that represents many different backgrounds culturally and many different faith backgrounds or no faith background, we really try to make chapel an experience that is universal and just makes it a safe space to, for anyone coming from any background. It's also an opportunity for kids to, if they're comfortable, to share what it is that they believe. And I'm being approached by kids who are wanting to talk to me about being Greek Orthodox, for example, being Muslim, and telling me things that they would like to incorporate into the next time we do chapel. And that's really exciting to me because I, I don't think if we weren't providing this opportunity, I don't think these conversations would even come up. To me, that's very powerful because we're living in a world where so much of the conflict that happens is often over these very things, these very differences, these differences of opinion or differences of belief systems that have been just for generations and centuries have been um, the, the source of conflict. And here at our little rectory school in Pomfret, we're having conversations at the table between two people whose countries are at war, often for religious reasons. And this, this safe space, this, this regular conversation we are encouraging at rectory might be the beginning of some, some peace amongst these differing groups. So we had a really powerful moment at our first chapel in September, which the theme was welcoming the stranger. And in our opening remarks, I asked students to raise their hand if they could say the word welcome in whatever language was their native language. So I had them all come up and there was probably about 15 kids up there. And they said welcome in Korean and Japanese and Chinese and Spanish. And we had one student from Ukraine and one student from Russia come up and they were standing next to each other. And when they said welcome, the first student from Ukraine said it, and then the student from Russia said it, and it was the same word. Welcome to Ukraine. Welcome. Welcome. And you could just sort of 
feel and hear the feeling that probably we were all experiencing, which was like, wow, you know, we are living right now at a time when these two countries are at war and here we are together saying that same word of welcome side by side. And it was really, really powerful. So our chapel themes, often they come from just an idea I have, but really I'm part of a much bigger and more important group of people, which is the Spiritual Life Committee. And this has been a committee that's been around for about 10 years now. And some people come from similar faith backgrounds. Some people come from no faith background. But the, the shared interest is in creating something that's meaningful to the community. So we often meet once a couple or a couple times a month and we discuss ideas that we think would make a good theme. And we're very conscious about what we choose for the theme every month to see that it fits what's going on and the core values of our school. And we try to emphasize those and, and try to give a similar message that there's goodness, there's kindness, and there's spirituality and gratefulness in everything if you take the opportunity to find it. So we come up with themes based on what's happening in the world, what's happening on our campus, and just general thematic concepts that are common in all world religions. And the Spiritual Life Committee tries to embrace all the religions of all of our students. We can't offer everything to every child every week. It's simply a logistical impossibility. So what the Spiritual Life Committee tries to do is find with each month readings from different faiths that fit the same theme. Because most of the major religions of the world operate off the same theme. They're all there. That common ground is found time and time and time again when you look at world religions. Chapel really is just one of the facets of the Spiritual Life Committee. There are things going on throughout the month, throughout the weeks, uh, throughout the school year, where we are offering opportunities. We had a chaplain previous who would do a meditation hour on a Thursday. We've had activities where we collect food um, and other supplies to donate to shelters in our area, food banks. We've done other activities where we've written cards to veterans or done up, you know, some outreach in our community. Most recently, we've been trying something new, which is a Sunday night, short 15 minute activity we call release and reset. And it's a chance to finish up our Sunday night for the borders. Kind of, again, there's that breath, but taking a breath, looking forward to our week and kind of being mindful about what we want to look forward to, what we want to let go of. So those are some examples of the kind of work we as a spiritual life committee have been part of. And I've loved collaborating with the other adults on the committee, but really I've loved collaborating with the kids because it's feeling more and more like it's their time and their program. And that's really what it's about to me. The chapel experience has changed a great deal since I came here. When I arrived in 1992, we used to have one or two faculty assigned to go to chapel. And we would come in with a bunch of sleepy looking Southern boys uh, who looked like they were being dragged to church and they were here and it wasn't the religion for many of them, but it was part of the requirement of the school. We're not a religious school, but we've always had a religious component. When I first applied here, I was actually confused and wondered if I was going to a religious school uh, for an interview. And I was told very quickly by the current headmaster at the time, Tom Army, that no, the rectory part of rectory school comes from here, that, that it started in the rectory of the Episcopal Church because our founder, Mr. Bigelow, was in fact Father Bigelow and uh, was the headmaster for the first several years and then his son took over. Uh, but we are not an overtly religious school. And, it, and it's sometimes hard for people because they hear the name and they, and they get confused. That said, we don't want to directly be non-religious either because religion is part of history and religion is part of culture. And to teach that there's a variety of them and that they need to be able to work together and that for a long time and in many societies, they have been able to work together and that they have been able to share space. We have a community in this church that is so welcoming to any opportunity to interact with the school because the connection between that school and this church 
our school, our church, has been a profound one for a century. My name is the Reverend Sandra Kosman, and I am the priest in charge here at Christ Church in Pomfret. I live in the house where the school was started, and sometimes late at night when I hear things knocking around, I wonder if it's the ghosts of the, the schoolboys of the past. There's an ongoing relationship between the school and between the church that um, is a companionship that, that I think serves both entities well. Um, the Episcopal Church has a deep commitment to education and spirituality, and uh, I see that deep commitment to developing the whole person at rectory school and educating the, the students, not only on secular things, but developing their spiritual lives. So there, there's a wonderful relationship that continues to this day, although the, the school is not a, an active ministry of the parish. There are people in this parish, whether they be teachers or members of the congregation, who deeply love the school and think of the school as part of our ministry in the town of Pomfret. And it's a blessing to be part of that. I love the community. I love the community of the rectory school. I love the community of Christ Church. Uh, my wife and I have been parishioners here since our oldest child was about four or five years old, so a little over 20 years. And the sense of community that we feel here um, is one that our children, as much as anything, put best when they said that they just know that they have people. The God thing was not as important to them. It's not really as important to my wife and I. Uh, but the, the spirituality that comes from being part of a welcoming community, comes from being part of uh, a group, a school that, that believes in something of a higher power somewhere, is special. It's important. And, uh, you know, it's been very fulfilling for me. Actually, one of the saddest days of this school for me uh, was in 1995. It was, I think, November of 1995. And a uh, person who had been teaching here was a full-time tutor. His name was Alex Vasiloff. We actually have an award for Mr. Vasiloff now. Um, he was actively dying with esophageal cancer. And the students, some of them knew that Mr. V wasn't here or that he was home, but he wasn't coming to school. And they didn't really understand. And in speaking with Alex, he decided that he wanted the, the students to know because he missed his kids. Um, so we had an all school gathering and this place was full and the students wondered why they were here. And uh, Reverend Army got up and spoke about it. And I had to leave. Alex was a dear friend of mine. But it was so good for the kids to hear that and to understand that loss is a part of life. That moment for me let me realize that a church didn't have to be about dictating to me. It didn't have to be high and mighty. Sometimes it was just for community. And that changed my view of religion in general. Uh, and it helped me move myself forward a lot. I get a lot out of being part of chapel. I, I myself am a spiritual person and I feel very strongly that there is a bigger picture that we should all remind ourselves about. So for me, it's a chance to share that, what I think is very important to share that with others. It never ceases to amaze me how much I get out of the experiences we, with the kids and the, and the adults in the community when we put together one of these chapels, um, either in what students share of their own person, personal stories and reflections, or the conversations that lead into the putting together in the preparation of our chapel because we it's not just something that's done um, in an isolated manner by myself it, it is created by talking to students talking to adults finding out getting sort of putting my finger on the pulse of what's happening in our community so it's really given me a chance to get to know people in my opinion on a more meaningful level than I ever have as a, as a teacher in a classroom. I enjoy having the young people from Rectory School come here for worship. 
because it allows me to participate in their spiritual development. As a young person in the church, I enjoyed coming into the church and, and thinking about how I might be part of the worship experience of a community. So if I'm able to provide that for the young people of, uh, of Rectory School, it's such a blessing. When they come forward and are leading the music or reading quotations or sharing their stories, I see their spiritual lives developing. I think that spirituality and a prayer is a muscle. And by making a place and a circumstance where young people can be part of using those muscles, we're serving them well. And they're developing that muscle, that skill that's going to carry with them throughout their lives. They may well be you know, far away from their families or their friends, and they need a place to belong, a place to be part of the community, and we can be that now. Or at some point in their future when their life is not going as they had planned or things are not working out the way they thought it would, having that spiritual center, that spiritual memory to, to fall back on and to rely on and to, to move forward in development it is an opportunity for, for them to grow and to expand their lives. And I think that being part of chapel and being part of this community will help them grow in those areas and in those ways. I really do feel strongly about the, f the need for all of us to have a moment of quiet, a moment of peace for people who don't have this as part of their lives. I think it sort of, it kind of shows us how to do it. And some people naturally take the time to do that, whether it's in their dorm room or at their home, maybe they're met, they meditate, maybe they just go for a walk with their dog. Um, but a lot of our kids don't. So doing this i think shows hopefully is teaching students that this is important in order to take care of yourself taking care of yourself is a big part of contributing to the world around you i think it's important for the students to understand what the importance of a space like this is not so much the religion itself but the respect that you accord to anyone's religion uh, the respect you accord to a space that is a worship space, whether it's yours or anyone else's, because we've lost that. I think it's becoming less and less common to take time to reflect inwardly or to take time to think about the things that connect all of us in this world we're living in. I think in recent years, people have gotten less and less involved in institutional religions, which is fine, but I think there is still a need in each of us and a need as a community to acknowledge that side of ourselves. So if we can provide for kids, particularly if we can provide for our students the acknowledgement of that time and that importance, I think it's really worthwhile and valuable. And I also think being a school that comes from, uh, that pulls students and adults from a variety of places around the world, from different traditions and walks of faith and walks of life, it's an opportunity to, to share in, that, in a common experience that welcomes all. My hope for spiritual life at Rectory is that we continue to build upon what we've started. And I'm so proud to have been given the opportunity to be part of it. And my hope looking moving forward is that we can continue to make it the welcoming, this place, the welcoming place it is, and the whole concept of it as welcoming as it has been. I would hope that it students leave Rectory at, for one, remembering that they had this time to just stop and to think and reflect and feel in a way that they may not ever have done before. I also hope students would leave Rectory and say, you know, there might be a place for me somewhere, a community that I can connect with. And I also hope it provides kids with an experience of being with others that share different beliefs. And all of these experiences, I hope, would make our students, when they leave Rectory, be more loving, compassionate, and peaceful young adults in the world. So let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King and recognize that there are times